All right, so if you're watching this video, you are coming over from my Trails from Zero review video. Let's get into the spoilers of Trails from Zero and get really into the nitty gritty of the story, the characters, and everything that happens in this game. Maybe not everything, but at least some of the highlights. So I want to start off with how much... Well, first of all, Ren surprised me by showing up in the game. I was not expecting her to show up in the game. As a matter of fact, I went into this game completely blind. I watched maybe one character trailer, so I knew who the characters were going into this. And then when all the characters that showed up showed up, I was like, oh my gosh, Ren. Oh my gosh, just still in Joshua. There they are in the Bracer Guild. <laughs> they're, they're right here in the game. It's just, it was really cool to see these characters show up in this game from the last games that I spent so much time with. It was just cool to see kind of where, where they are at and what they've done. And I didn't realize that this game would focus so much on Ren as a character, but also focus on Joshua and Estelle and their pursuit of Ren. And I have to say that that whole entire story arc was just beautiful. There was a moment where you, you kind of wonder, is Ren one of the bad guys still? She's still working with Ouroboros. Come to find out she's not. She was actually there to kind of watch and not get involved, but she does get involved because came in, interfered and Estelle and Joshua got her and really at the end of the game it was a beautiful beautiful scene where they essentially adopted Ren into their family and it's just that's what made me a bumbling mess I was just crying and my wife came in she's like are you okay I'm like it's beautiful writing man it's, 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 it's how it went <laughs> it's pretty funny but this game has a, has a lot of heart this game like I said it really focuses on Ren I didn't even notice that Ren's brother was who you were rescuing until you rescue him, bring him back to the SSS building, and Ren starts making these comments about how she needs to hide because she doesn't want to talk to the people that are coming. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's right. We find out in Trails in the Sky the third, Ren's parents had another kid and it was a son. This is him. Her parents are coming. Oh my, just all hit me like a wave. And then when Ren was hiding in the closet and just crying, I'm like, dude, I'm I'm crying too. Like, this is really heartbreaking. That's the thing about this game is that the writing in it is top tier and the way that they keep plots consistently moving across different games is just really cool. And the way that they mention other characters, Kilika shows up, who was the um, head of the Bracer Guild for the, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the the name of, of the city, but she shows up and she makes a mention about Zen and, and it's just it, like you have that character come in, you have the other character come in who's working with this other government that uh, knows, why am I forgetting all the names all of a sudden? Regardless, the characters that come into play here, it's like, I didn't expect all these characters to, to show up and it was cool to see kind of where they were and what they're up to now and I was a little uh, upset to not see my boy Kevin I really thought Kevin was going to come in at the end especially when you're dealing with the the relics and Septian church stuff you're fighting this cult like there's a spiritual side of things going on I was like surely Kevin's going to make an appearance uh, but he doesn't so maybe that's maybe that's in the next game something else I want to talk about is how this game or specifically this series has a way of writing characters who have a dark past who have had bad things happen to them and you can tell that that's something that holds them back but by the end of the game they they tend to overcome that and i think if you've played the game hopefully you've played the game if you're watching this you know who i'm talking about tio had a really horrible past similar to ren in several ways through hanging out with lloyd and with the sss she winds up overcoming that hurt and that nightmare and winds up using it to fuel her to become a, a better person a better fighter and just I don't know. It, it's just it's something that like, look, it's it's easy to write a character with a broken past like that or has had bad things happen to them and really do it in a way that's not respectful. It's lame. It's not well written. But something I've noticed with these games is that they aren't afraid to tackle these dark themes with these characters and write a, a character with a hurtful past and just continue to just write them in a way that shows character growth, that shows even if you have a hard, hard pass or whatever, something bad happened in your life, it, it gives you hope that you can overcome that stuff and, and become worthwhile, a, a worthwhile, meaningful member of your team or maybe your friend group or something. I don't know. It's just, it's a really cool theme. I, I love that, the, that these games go there and that they tend to do that. And it's just, it's just really well written. And speaking of well written, I got to say the new characters, I knew I would like Lloyd. Lloyd is the pure of heart, goody two shoes. I, I, I'm hesitant to call him a, head, a goody two shoes, actually, because he's not like your boy scout. He's, he's very, he's a div, he's what 
the CPD needs in all the right ways. Lloyd is not, he can be stern when he wants to be, but he's more charismatic. He's more forgiving and more charming. He he meets people where they're at. When you're meeting with the, the two leaders of the of the gangs in the in Crossbell for the first time, you can see that he's trying to be understanding with them and trying to like be the, the peaceful negotiator and all that stuff. But even later in the game, when you start siding with the characters and letting them come along with you to help you with different cases, it's like, this is something that this city needs so badly is Lloyd who will be like, hey, you guys can't be doing this, but let's find a different way to get your aggression out, right? Let's do that. Lloyd has a way of meeting the criminals where they're at and in a way reforming them to a degree where he works with them and they start becoming better people because they've been around him. And that's what I liked about Lloyd was that when you're around him, you become a better person. I just, I think that's a really cool, really cool thing. A really cool way to write a character. I wasn't too sure how I would feel about Randy Orlando, but pretty much anytime he was on screen, I was laughing or grinning because he's just, he's just like Olivier, except like a little more restrained in his, in his flirtatious ways. But some of the things that, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, sorry, I just remember that it's funny to watch him and Tio and Ellie just all kind of pick on Lloyd a little bit and make him sound like he's, he's being a little forward with some of the women or he's like got some ulterior motives when he's talking to the female characters. It's just funny to watch him pick on him. And, and I think that's what I loved about these new characters is that while I did love Estelle, Joshua, all them from Trails in the Sky, there's something about the SSS that just feels like a really goofy family that I, I love just watching them on screen. That's why I did most of the side quests in the game because I was like, I want, I want more of these characters. I want to see some of the things they, some of the things they do. I want to see some of the, the hijinks they get involved in. And it's just, I don't know, it, it was really cool. I really love those characters. And I also got to say something else that I really liked about this game is how it kind of kept me on my toes through most of it. I really thought Uroboros was going to make a comeback and I was waiting for uh, the full character to make an appearance and he, you don't really ever see him. Come to find out that you're actually going up against this ancient cult. It's like, okay, what? <laughs> but then coming to find out that they're responsible for what was going on with Ren and Tio, and it's just like the way that they just kind of blew this up to make it like Ouroboros is not just the big bad. You also have this cult to deal with as well. And it's just, I don't know, man, the, the way that the places that it goes, it was really terrifying. The way that those pills would unlock these abilities, but also turn you into a monster. And then the main bad guy could control you through that. It was just like, for some reason, the stakes felt a little bit higher here. It just, it was really really interesting to see where it went. And again, I was hoping that Kevin would make a, an appearance, but, and that's the thing with this game is that it left me wondering just where it is they're going to go. By the time I reached the end of Trails from Zero, I was left like, I, I felt satisfied. Like that was a really good story, right? You saved Kia in the end, which is great. But I'm left wondering like, what are we going to do in the next game? We've got to find out like what happened all those years ago with that. Cause you visit all these different temples and stuff. And you got to find out like what happened with that. What did the cult do all those years ago and all that stuff? You know, is Rixia ever going to reveal her identity of Yen to the to the group? I mean, that was another cool thing is getting Yen as part of your uh, team at closer to the end of the game. And she just wrecks the entire powerhouse powerhouse, man. It was it was amazing. I did watch the uh, trailer that came out for Trails to Azure that was like, you know, oh, yeah, here's your characters and all this stuff. And I saw like you get Noel as part of your team. Uh, Wazy gets part of your team as well. I'm like, yes, I actually like Wazy. Wazy's really cool. I was looking forward to Trails to Azure. I, I've I've skipped a lot of stuff in this game. I know I've missed a lot, I think, but uh, again, this is kind of what the videos are for. It's a discussion starter. So let's talk in the comments about some of your favorite moments from Trails from Zero. <laughs> I, for, I forgot to mention that when I was playing through the game, I was wondering like, why, why is it only, why, how is it that I can only get money through the side quests in this game? Why am I not getting money from beating uh, monsters in fights? Like, why is it so hard to get money in this game? And I completely forgot until pretty much the final chapter of the game that you could go to that bank place. What is it? The IBC and trade in your Sepeth for money. And yeah, that was, uh, I basically played the game uh, a lot harder, made the game a lot harder for myself. But with that being said, Trails from Zero, my goodness, it was an amazing game. Loved it from stem to stern. Awesome game, really great stuff. Uh, and again, I know I've missed a lot of, of things that happened in the game. I've missed a lot of the side quests, didn't even talk about those, although I really did enjoy the fishing one where you had to, I think you run into the the fishing baron dude from the last game, and I'm like, ah, I beat you in the last game because you're a jerk, and he and he mentions that. He's like, you know, this girl beat me in, in a fishing competition. I was like, oh, that's 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 really cool. I like how they kind of kept that going. But yeah, with if I've missed anything, some of your favorite side quests, some of your favorite moments, 
drop them down in the comments below. Let's continue the discussion down there. And as always, thank you for checking out this video. Uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Definitely going to be playing a lot of trails uh, next year with Trails to Azure coming out. And then Trails of Cold Steel going to be playing through all four of those games. Trails on the Reverie. There's a lot of Trails content going to be coming to the channel next year. So let's, uh, let's continue talking about it down in the comments down below. And without further ado, thank you for watching my video. And uh, yeah, be a deer. Keep it locked here. We'll see you in the next video.